Welcome to today's lesson. So uh, we are looking at mathematics uh, for grade 10 to grade 12, including GCE. And the topic that we are looking at is computer and calculator. So the specific objective we are trying to achieve in this lesson today is on how to convert a pseudocode to a flowchart. So before we can dive into solving the question, just a quick reminder of the four basic things that you have to know about computer and calculator. So you already know what a computer is. It's simply any electronic device that can be used to input data, that can be used for processing data, it can be used for storing data, and so on and so forth. Then you also have to remember that they are in a computer, we have what we call the inputs, the things that you put into the computer. Then we also have the things that we call the outputs, the things that the computer produces after processing the data. For example, after you input a song into the laptop, then the laptop is going to produce sound. So sound is an example of outputs. So, okay, now to successively solve questions that come in the exam, in your exams every year, it doesn't miss, we have to always bear in mind the meaning of the four basic symbols under computer and calculator. So the first symbol is the oval shape, which simply means start or stop. So when you're starting, you can start with this one. And stopping, you can also stop with this one. So the other names for start and stop is the, uh, begin and the end. Then we also have an input. So when you're trying to put in, uh, to show the inputs, this is where you put them in. This is a parallelogram. Then when you're also trying to write the outputs, the things that are being displayed by the computer, you have to write them in this box as well. Another box, okay? You see how we can properly apply these things. Then we have the, uh, the, 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 the rectangle there, which is an action box. So in the action box, always remember, this is where you have to put a formula. It's that simple. Then we have a decision box. So in the decision box there, that is where we put the if conditions. So it's a question. So a question on the pseudocode, when writing it in here, it changes into a condition. Okay, so you will see how these things will be done. So like we are saying, we are saying now, a flowchart is simply a graphical representation of a problem uh, solving strategy. That is what we call a flowchart. Now, a flowchart, when we connect these symbols appropriately using some uh, arrows, then it forms a what? A flowchart. Okay, so now, going to the question that we are trying to practice now, in converting a pseudocode to a flowchart. Now, we have said a flowchart is a graphical representation of a problem solving strategy. Now, we also have to understand what a pseudocode is. So, a pseudocode is simply a step by a step by step set of instructions that can be used to, 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 to program a code, or in simpler language, a step by step instruction that can be used to perform an action. For example, if you are trying to show someone on how to turn on a TV, you tell them, okay, plug in, get the remote, press the on button, sit back, relax. At least if people follow those instructions, they'll be able to successively turn on the TV and watch. So that is just an example scenario of what a pseudocode is. Okay, now let's look at the pseudocode that has been written on the board here and see how it can be translated into a flowchart. Now, this is one of the questions that comes in the exam and it usually has quite uh, a lot of marks which you can't afford to miss. So as long as you follow us, understand this, you will never fail any question in the exam. Okay, so here we have simple start. We have said this one means it, start. Now, here, the question that is supposed to be here is, you are supposed to convert this pseudocode, you convert it into a what? A flowchart. So now, already things are, are, are straightforward here. Start, this is the start that we have. So you are going to write our start. So in the start here, so let me just write it this side. So start, then we put the over there. Then the next thing they are saying, enter radius. Now, everything that you are entering into something, it is called an input. And the input box is this one. So you are going to connect using an arrow, then we'll do the, the input. So draw a parallelogram nicely. It shouldn't be questionable. Everyone should be able to see that it is a parallelogram. So in here, now here on the pseudocode, you write the full words like that, radius. But when it comes to here, you are going to write it only the symbols. So we are going to say enter R. 
okay then you have to go to the next now the next instruction now says if okay so here they are saying if radius is less than zero so now the if when it comes to the so the moment you see if then you know it's supposed to go into the decision box now the if here it changes into is as you are putting it in there so when you draw the diamond shape there that diamond shape okay which looks like that so in here the if it changes into is then is radius less than zero so is so here if but so is the error less than zero okay then there are two possible possibilities it's a question this is the question so is radius less than zero so there are two questions they can either be that answer or that answer so now here they're saying if radius is less than zero then display error message and re-enter positive value so meaning if yes if no so if it is less than zero then you have to display now the display symbol is this one so you have to display so here now they're saying then display error message so here you are displaying simply the error message okay display error message and re-enter positive value so re-enter where you are entering from the error is here so meaning the first error you entered was wrong so you have to re-enter that is where this loop now goes back so you re-enter you start afresh okay so having done that let's go to the next one now they are saying else enter height. So after this has happened, you re-enter the correct error. Now they are saying you enter height. So for entering also, it is a parallelogram. So we draw a very nice parallelogram there. So here also they are saying we enter height. So we enter the height. We put these things nicely as it appears there. If you want, you can put the way display error message. But the fact that you have put it in the display, it is already display error message. So you enter the height, as they have said, then again there's an if. So the moment you see if, then you know you have to make a decision. So the only place where you can make a decision from is in the decision box, which is the diamond shape. Okay, so you ask yourself, is the height less than zero? This is a question. So of course there should be a yes and a no. So now here it's a yes. So here the thing, if if height is less than zero, then display error message and re-enter positive height. So also here, we are displaying the error message. So display error message. So this is the error message. We put it as it appears there. Then they are saying, and re-enter positive height. So you haven't done, they are saying re-enter. So you go back and re-enter the correct height here. Then here it says else volume is equals to this one. So the moment you see a formula, then you know that you have to apply uh, the action box, which is a rectangle. So the moment you see that one, you put in this one. Okay. So this is where we're going to say area. And like I say, on the pseudocode, we find the words. But here we just find the, the symbol. So this one will be area half multiplied by r squared multiplied by height. That is what you write in here. Okay, so we continue. We continue now. The other thing says, and if display volume. So display already, we already know what the display is. It is this, like that. So when you display now, so you write here now, you can write the way display volume or just write volume. So display volume and then stop. So from there, you are expected to stop. So now the stop button is the of. So we have successively converted from this pseudocode into a flowchart. So this is the flowchart and that is the pseudocode. Then in our next lesson, we are going to look at on how to convert now from a flowchart into the pseudocode. Thank you for listening. If there are any questions, please feel free to contact us. These are interactive lessons.